This is an A-level presentation looking at the role of B lymphocytes or B cells and antibodies in the immune system. Start the whole process off, suggest you go back and have a look through your notes and come up with the process of how we get from antigens and pathogens all the way through to producing multiple copies of T cells, including cytotoxic T cells, and of course, all the way through to the beginning of B cell production. If you haven't already, I suggest you go back and look at the presentations on phagocytosis and T cells, and just make sure you're familiar with those before you go any further. As a little extension task, try and compare specific and non-specific immunity. So again, there are five main steps involved in the production of T cells or helpful T cells. And there are, of course, four functions of those T cells. Pause the video for a second, see if you can remember the sequence of five steps. And when you're ready, replay and look, see how you've done. So pause the video now. So the sequence of five steps are as follows. Um, you just have to remember, folks, that there are five steps involved in the production of the T cells, but there are also four functions of the T cells, which is memory cells, stimulate phagocytosis, stimulation of B cells, which is what we're going to look at in this presentation, and of course the activation of cytotoxic T cells and the production of performed by cytotoxic T cells. If you have gone back through one of the other presentations on T cells or phagocytosis, then this should be familiar to you. If you haven't, this is just an overview of the entire process. Uh, there are three presentations in total that I go through on this. Uh, the GCSE stuff looks at the non-specific immunity in the left-hand side in terms of the skin, tears, nose, hair, muscles, cilia, and stomach acid. Make sure you are familiar with that before you start going through the A-level content. And then at A-level, we talk about sources of pathogens, phagocytosis. We then talk about the activation of helper T cells, the roles of T cells, and onto this presentation, which is gonna look at the B cell, role of B cells and antibodies. We have already mentioned the terms non-specific and specific immunity. The non so you should be aware at this point that you should not be using the term white blood cell at A level and instead should be using terms T lymphocyte and B lymphocyte. You can, of course, show those to T cells and B cells. You should be aware of where T cells that they mature, so they're already there, they just simply mature in the thymus and the same B cells. It refers to the bone marrow, and you should be aware of the term cell mediated immunity and humoral immunity so that whenever they appear in a question, you know specifically the question is linked to T cells or B cells. In humoral immunity, we talk about the role of B lymphocytes or B cells. And there are two main types of B cells you need to be aware of. The first is the memory B cell. And a memory B cell can divide by mitosis to produce multiple B cells, which can then be turned into the second type of B cell, which is called a plasma B cell. And a plasma B cell is responsible for the production of antibodies. One of the common mistakes in A-level is to talk about memory B cells producing antibodies, and that is not true. It is the plasma cells, the plasma B cells, that produce the antibodies. We're going to look at the several stages involved in humoral activity. This is the overall sequence, and you can see that there's quite a lot of text in there, and it's quite difficult to follow in one go. So I would come back to that later. Leave that for now. Don't even read it. Go through the rest of the video, and then you can pause and come back to this. It will appear at the end, and hopefully it will make a lot more sense when you get to see it the second time around. But that's the process written out for you. To start with, we have a pathogen and we have a B cell. If you note, the pathogen has genetic material inside it and it has antigens on its surface. And of course, the B cell has antibodies that are fixed onto the surface membrane of the B cell. It's important that you mention that, that those antibodies that you talk about are the ones that are fixed onto the surface of the B cell. They are not the antibodies that are produced and released into the bloodstream. 
Again, be aware that the images are not the scale. They're definitely, definitely not the scale, folks, but it'll give you a visual representation of what goes on in the process. So to get us started, you can clearly see that the pathogen and the antigen of the pathogen has docked with a complementary Remember, the shapes are not the same, but they fit together like jigsaw puzzle pieces. They are complementary antibody, and it is fixed on the surface of the B cell. The next stage is that the pathogen enters into the B cell by endocytosis. In step three, we look at the antigens from the pathogen again be specific because there's antigens on the surface of the b cell that we don't worry about in this process but they do exist so you got to be specific and talk about the antigens from the pathogen are presented on the surface of the b cell and specifically in the antibodies that are fixed onto the cell surface membrane of the b cell We now have a T helper cell involved, and the T helper cell simply docks with the antigens that are being presented from the pathogen on the surface of the B cell. In step five, we now have a process in which the B cell starts to divide to produce multiple clones, and that is your process known as mitosis. In step six, we simply refer to the fact that we have two types of B cells. On the left hand side, we have a picture of a brain to represent the memory cells. And on the right hand side, we have a predictor of a factory to represent the plasma cells. As you can now see, the plasma cells are responsible for the production of antibodies and we use the term antibodies but what we actually mean is monoclonal antibodies because all of the antibodies are identical clones of each other in step eight we have the antibodies attaching to the pathogen and that will result in a process of agglutination in which pathogens are clumped together into large lumps to make it easier for phagocytes to identify, engulf, and hydrolyze them. Now, if a second infection arrives, we will then find that the memory cells are already there. The pathogen docks with those B memory cells, and they automatically start dividing by mitosis to produce the plasma cells. And plasma cells will start to produce large amounts of antibodies. So what you end up with is a very very quick production of antibodies and also a large volume of antibodies being produced and we refer to this as the secondary immune response and we're back to all the text that we've seen at the start of the process uh, this time around we've shuffled the statements up so they're not in the correct order and your task is simply to think back over the, the last couple of minutes of video explaining the process of how B cells work and work out the order of these statements. So pause the video now and when you're ready and you've got your sequence, play and you'll get the answer. And what you've got is this is the correct sequence put into the correct order just to make it easier for you to follow and also to produce your notes what you may want to do is you may want to go and take a screenshot of that particular slide and go back through the video and just annotate on the video any additional notes that you feel are going to help you remember the process once again folks remember memory cells do not produce antibodies Memory B cells are only responsible for mitosis and the production of new plasma cells. And it's these new plasma cells that will produce the antibodies in much larger numbers than previously and in much more rapidly than previously. And in 
some instances they're produced so quickly that you don't even show any symptoms of the disease. Moving on to antibodies. Antibodies have a particular structure. Each of the different sections is numbered on the right hand side in the image. The name of each section is on the left hand side. Pause the video for a few minutes and try and work out if you can identify the name of each of the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7.